there <clears throat> there comes a point in time where a party that's in that's in the majority has to remind the other party that 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 they're the minority. So the Democrats are in the majority right now, and the Republicans are in the minority, and the Democrats have to remind the Republicans that the Republicans are the minority, and the um and so like that. So this week um, marks the one year anniversary of the January sixth of the January sixth Klan insurrection, and there will be some com there will be, there will be some commemorations of the day in Washington, and pro democracy groups will hold vigils for democracy while pro Trump. While the pro-Trump sycophants will be holding vigils to support the insurrectionist people, and Donald Trump plans to hold a um, a Klan conference on that day, where he says he will discuss um, in depth um, the supposed claim of the stolen election of 2020, citing several states where the numbers don't work for them and feel the magic. Remember, the insurrectionist took place on November 3rd. Um, no, it took place on January 6th. Um. Um, over the holiday break, the Department of Justice released more shocking footage of the allegedly completely unarmed protests, which showed three hours of bloody violence raining down upon the Capitol um, police that day. <clears throat> Trump's attempt to reframe January 6th as an, as an unarmed peaceful protest may be his greatest act of a chutz pull yet, and that's saying something. Several news, several news organizations um, have released polling this past week looking at the public's attitude toward the 2020 election and January 6th, one year later, the Washington Post University of uh, Maryland poll found that 68% say that there was no evidence of fraud, and that includes huge majorities of Democrats, 88%, and independents, 78%. Um, the Republicans, however, are still living in that denial. 62% um, of Republicans still believe that the election was a fraud, which it wasn't, um, a number virtually unchanged um, since this time last year. And that adds up to a massive 30% of the nation that still believes the election was stolen from Trump, which it wasn't. An, a an ABC Ipsos poll had found pretty much the same thing. They also asked if Americans believed that the, that the people who stormed the Capitol that day were threatening democracy, and 72% 70 said yes, while 25% said that they were protecting democracy, which the 25% are inbreds. That, la that last number includes 52% of Republicans, which is still stunning. I'm sure you will recall those ancient times when the GOP prided itself um, I'm being the party of law and order, which they never were really, but, um, 78% of um, Republicans now believe that Trump bears only, only a little or no responsibility for the attack. He, um, he bears a 100% responsibility for that attack, which is contradictory since they also profess to think that the mob was protecting democracy and surely they, they and surely they don't think Trump was against that, do they? A CBS poll delved into public attitudes about political violence and it, and it isn't comforting. Two-thirds of Americans believe that the events of January 6th were a sign of increasing political violence and that American democracy is being threatened, and most have not changed their minds about that violence in the ensuing 12 months. 87% dis disapproved then, and 83% and say they disapprove now. But lest you think that Republicans understand what happened that day, CBS reports that the intensity with which Republicans disapprove softened over the summer and has stayed softer. They no longer strongly disapprove. They seem to have reconciled themselves into seeing something or some kind of minor infraction. Um, four out of the ten have persuaded themselves that it was actually Democrats who committed the balance, which it wasn't. Apparently, they think that Trump's sycophants were standing outside sweetly singing, what a friend we have in Jesus, which they weren't. As um, And they claimed that Antifa members hit cops over the head with American flags, which they didn't. Um, most disturbing in the, in the CBS poll was the question of whether there will be political violence in the losing side in the future, and 62% and of Americans believe that there will be, and that's not all. We then followed up and asked if that's if if that's your side that loses and there's a as in fact violence, would you be in favor of that or not? It's an abstraction right now, of course, and a mere two percent would favor it. But another quarter left it open, saying that it depends on the circumstances, and and in that we start to see political differences with 2020 Trump voters. Twice as likely as the Biden voters, um, to say that it, that it, um that it depends, and thirty percent of Republicans are open to violence if their side loses. Well, that's what happens when you're inbred. The inbreeding gets a hold of you, and when you're inbred, you're prone to violence. Um, all of that, all of that indicates that the GOP is very dug in on that big lie and then suing Klan insurrection, and it's unlikely that they're going to change their fucking mind. But if there were any decent leadership in their fucking Republican Party and a moral compass among the among the uh, among the um the right wing media, all of them know the truth, but refuse to fucking speak it. And there might have been a chance to walk back from the precipice, but there is not 
and so we are facing the increasingly uncomfortable reality that tens of millions of our fellow Americans see violence as a reasonable response to losing the election. And because of that, two-thirds of Americans now see democracy as being threatened, and they are right. All of this new data shows that the ideals expressed in a remarkably unvarnished year-end New York Times editorial speak for a large majority of Americans. The Republic faces an existential threat from a movement that is openly contemptu contemptuous of a, of a democracy and has shown that it is willing to use violence to achieve its end. And no self-governing society can survive such a threat by denying that it exists. And, 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 it, and exist it does. It is clear that Republicans refuse to accept reality and that they are primed to fight to preserve their delusions and the large majority who um, who now otherwise are going to have to step up. The good news is, is that there seems to be many more of them. And all that polling about January 6th, the big line, the willingness to use violence to obtain power, Democrats and independents are in lockstep agreement, which is unusual. On this, the country isn't polarized. A large majority of Americans are opposed to this anti-democratic impulse, and the Republicans are very much in the minority here. Um... That means that we're that means that we're going to go into this election year, and yes, I know. I'm sorry. It's incumbent upon the Democrats to ensure that this issue is in, is in front and center. The Washington Post's E.J. Dion made a good case for the Democrats to run on the on the democracy platform by quickly passing the democracy bills pending in the Senate, and with the pre and with the um um and with the and with the current president himself making the lead and championing democracy far more forcefully. Than he has until now, pushing legislation and using executive action whenever possible. Most importantly, he writes, um, It also requires um, invoking the evidence from the House Select um, Committee's January 6th investigation to make clear that the threat to democracy comes not just from Trump, but also from a Republican Party complicit in undermining the democratic institutions and both overtly and through its silence. And it's not just Trump, and it's, and it's not just fucking Trump, but it's far, it's fucking far from it, basically. The entire Republican Party is complicit in this ongoing assault on democracy. And from the wealthy donors to the powerful um, Washington officials, and all the way down to the grassroots, Democrats must pull out all the stops to explain the stakes and activate the vast majority of Americans who want to save it. And this cannot be a worse time for complacency. Now, if you like the video, give the video a like and subscribe to my channel, RBW King, and also hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when a new video comes out, and thanks for listening.